I just woke up. Can you tell? And that mean lady like, sounded like I did this interview. Mm. Right here on Praise 104.1. Coming up in 15 minutes, it's something for the brothers with Pastor CJ Blair. Right now, it's Whitney Houston with Go to the Rock on Praise 104.1. And what's up, DC? <laughs> see you guys in the DC area. All right, take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Did an interview. But I'm still asleep. About to get my hair cut. Can you tell I need it? Really bad. It's that good hair. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Anything but. If I don't get a haircut, you all will send me back to the motherland. See this lady right here? This is a very, very, very special lady. She's a member of my church, a leader here in the church. Probably the most um, incredible spirit you will ever, ever meet. Um, you would have ever met. Um, she's sitting, this is sitting on my desk because this is her obituary. She passed away. And as a pastor, most people think that it is the workload, but it's more than just the workload. One of the greatest burdens of being a pastor is emotional. Nobody really thinks about that or talks about that often. Nobody warns you about that, and I certainly didn't learn that in the seminary. <laughs> but the emotional toll, the emotional real estate that is pulled upon, that's what gets you. That's what wears you down. You know, that that's why you have to encourage yourself with scripture and say, Be not weary in your well doing, for in due season. So it's things like this. Having lost several members, numerous members, and all of them special, but having lost a sister like this. Who, when I walk in the room, she's like, there he is. That's my rock star pastor, my rock star pastor. Having sat by her bed um, two, just two weeks ago now and have her whisper in my ear with a faint voice, just holding on barely to life. You know, I said, I love you, and I hugged her. And she says, I love you more. I said, no, I love you more. She said, no, you don't either. Uh, in her real faint voice, and then the next day for them to call me and say that she's transitioned and gone on to be with God. It takes its toll, and I, it's on a Sunday morning, so I gotta go in and preach with great power. But let me tell you how God works. So, I get that call, I'm emotional. Thank God my daddy was here, <laughs> because I was like a little kid here in my office, grabbed him and just collapsed crying, knowing that I gotta get it together. But it just, I had to have that moment, and then after that moment, when I tell you, the Holy Ghost preached in this place. Woo! That's some powerful preaching. When you can preach through your pain, that's a real preaching. So this is part of what I do. Um, you guys have been wondering, where is Smoking Orphal? Where is he? You know, where is the music? Why is he no music, no new material, no new nothing? Well, for the last seven years, for the last seven years, my focus and my dedication has been primarily and exclusively almost exclusively to the church. You've had several things intermittent in between my new CD, the last new CD, which was Smoking North Alive, and what's coming. Yeah, you care, you got it, you heard it right? What's coming? I put out several new things, uh, and but in that in-between time, in the meantime, which is the name of the new CD, my in the meantime has been ministering to families that have been going through visiting the sick, um, preaching, teaching, getting the church into a new facility. We're in a $7 million facility. And trust me, that is no small task, period. It's a challenge. Just moving a, a group of people to a specific place, huge challenge. With the help of the Lord, mm, put me in C sharp, I feel it. It's falling in this place. With the help of the Lord, we can. I'll talk to you all in a minute. Look, I got some work to do, and then I gotta get my hair cut. So I'm gonna let you all hang out with me while I get my hair cut. And uh, I don't know, whatever of us we can do as we hang out together. Thanks for hanging out with Smoking Awful. Love you.